Hey guys, Nicole here with Obscure Reptiles and Caging and today we're going to be showing you the anatomy of a ball python. So let's get started. Hey guys, so I get people ask all sorts of questions all the time so I figured this would be a good little video for you guys to show you everything there is to know about a ball python. This is a female ball python. Um, some ball pythons are different than others. Some grow in length and some grow around. Um, we've actually got a few other snakes that are the exact same age as her. Nowhere near as long but they're much fatter. They eat about the same. Uh, she just keeps growing in length. So she is a little bit slim when it comes to being a ball python but because she's still eating every single week, never misses a meal, she's totally fine. So what we're going to do is show you everything there is to know about her. Um, the number one thing people always ask is, where's the snake go to the bathroom? What is that slit right there? So we're going to start at the back end of her. This is her vent. So you can see this right here, this line. Oh, hold on, she's wrapping around my camera. So this right here is her vent. So you can see that slit up there. Not only is that where she goes to the bathroom, if she had eggs, that's where they will come from. If it's a boy, it's where their hemipenes are. And even being a girl, you see that tiny little nub there, nub there, those are actually spurs. They have the ability to wiggle, wiggle them a little bit, and especially the males are going to wiggle them, and they're actually used to kind of get the female's attention. They can be used for breeding purposes. Um, females have them also. Some of them have big ones, some have small. It doesn't really mean what gender they are, but those are their spurs, and there's one on either side of their vent. All right, so next, I'm gonna show you guys a little bit to go with her head. So hopefully we can show you guys. Do you see her tongue flicking? Of course, when we want her to do it, she's going to stop. There it goes. So she actually has a forked tongue. And the reason for that is, that how, is how she is sensing things. So every time she's flicking, she's pulling air back into her mouth, and she's sensing the air. She has an organ right on the inside of her mouth. I'll show a little picture of it, and that is how she's she's actually tasting the air is what she's doing because they don't have a sense of smell. Um, if I can get really close to her head, you can see those tiny little holes in the front of her. Those holes are actually called her heat pits. That is how she can sense prey by temperature. So when you feed, let's say, a frozen thawed rodent, that's why they're supposed to be slightly warmed up, like with something with a warm water, a heating pad. It should be a few degrees above room temperature so she can actually see it and that's how you can get a lot of snakes to trick them into eating frozen thawed because they will see it, sense it with those pits and that's how they can heat find their ant, their prey. This one's going to be really difficult to get. Underneath her chin she has a split <laughs> right there. You see that split under her chin? Perfect. So that split underneath her chin is actually where her jaw sits. It's not connected right here. So when they actually go to eat their food, if this is the jaw, when they open up and it's a really big meal, it separates. So they're able to, they, people say dislocate their jaw. It's, they're not connected and it opens up this way to be able to accommodate for a bigger meal coming in. Now inside their mouth, they've actually got tiny tiny needle like teeth uh, they actually really don't hurt I have been bit um, they do it so fast it doesn't hurt but they kind of look like toothbrush bristles that are very sharp they are angled backwards a little bit they're all slightly angled backwards and they are constantly regrowing regenerating teeth kind of like a shark so when a couple break off during a feed they will actually grow more and that way they're able to constantly have teeth even if they're falling or getting knocked out when they are getting their prey, when they're hunting, swallowing it. Uh, but they're very thin, very fine. Like I said, they look like toothbrush bristles. Now inside of her mouth, you're not gonna be able to see, but she actually has this tube that's normally closed, but if they yawn or they're eating something, you can so sometimes see down this tube, which is kind of right where our saliva gland is, and it's called their glottis. Now what that is, is that allows air to go down without them breathing so when they're swallowing their meal because sometimes when they're 
swallowing a larger meal, it could take 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes to swallow that meal down. That allows them to continue to breathe while they're using their throat and pushing a large prey item down their throat. So for example, something this size, we would be using a rat that's the same size around as her widest part of her body. So if that's her widest right here, then that's a size we would be feeding as a rat. So that's a pretty wide rat. So if I'm using a rat that's the widest size of her body, her head is very much smaller than her body. So they use that to be able to still have oxygen while they're swallowing. When it comes to those teeth, people always assume they have two large fangs. Those are venomous snakes. Well, not poisonous snakes are venomous. Venomous is something that actually bites you and they shoot venom into your body. Poisonous is something like a frog or something you have to actually touch. It's poison. Venom actually gets shot into you. These are very much not venomous. You can't have anything venomous or cool like that in uh, New York State. So that's why all of these guys have so many teeth because they actually have to grab their prey and squeeze them. When it comes to these, she again is a pretty slim, especially for a female, uh, but she's still growing. She's only two and a half years old. Um, but her muscles, you can see with the way she's moving, you can't. But it almost looks like that lump is her spine, but it's not. There's a muscle on each side above her spine. So you can't see a ball python's spine if they're healthy. You can see the lump on either side with the muscle because their entire body is one muscle. I actually read that they have anywhere between two and four hundred vertebrae in their spine. That's how they're able to move, bend, twist, pretty much go in any position that they want to be in because they're just all uh, ribs and vertebrae pretty much. They're just one long back. Uh, so when it comes to them, that's why they shed so much. So because they're constantly has their body, as you can see her body has, bottom of her body has these larger scales. These are constantly rubbing and tearing and having abrasion and because anything that they're moving on, their body is inching their way forward. So the bottom of them, like right there, she has one, let's see, one tiny, tiny little mark right there. That's just from her using her body. So she's actually going to be going into shed here pretty soon, probably in the next week or two. So when she sheds, that little mark's going to come off. Any little um, problem that happened, if she got bit by a rat while she was eating, um, if she scraped herself while moving around, and the fact that she's growing also is why she sheds. But their scales are actually partly made up of keratin, which is what our nails are made up of. That's why they are so hard. You can actually see the individual scales. They all just happen to have different color, pigmentation. Bananas are really cute because the black dots are actually... Sometimes they're full scales, sometimes they're partly scales. But they have different kinds of scales throughout their entire body. Like I said, these side ones are kind of like armor plating. These bottom ones, big long rectangles. The ones on the sides are even different. And the ones on their head are different shaped as well. If I can get out of the way, so there we go. That way, there's a, they're actually, that's how people discovered scaleless ball pythons is scaleless heads. So scaleless heads, if you looked close to their head, they were missing small scales on their head. So they bred two of those together and they created a scaleless ball python. And they can see through their eyes, but the problem is they just don't have the best eyesight. Uh, there are different types of pupils for, ball, uh, for snakes, not ball pythons, but you could see she has like normal round pupils. When it comes to boas, I have both dumerals and an albino boa, they have the cat-like eye. They have the vertical pupils. And some people I've heard say that only one, uh, only venomous snakes have the cat-like ones, but that's not true because both my boas who have it are not venomous as well. They're also constrictors. So different snakes just to have different, different eye shapes. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. If I'm missing anything, you guys have any other questions about ball pythons that I'm not covering, please put it in the comments below. I'd love to be able to try to answer it for you. Um, another random thing is they actually, so inside, down in here, they've got two lungs, just like humans, but only one of them really works for breathing. I believe it's the left lung is closer to the front, and that's what they breathe out of. And then the right lung staggered and a little further down, and that's actually what holds air for them. Like it holds, it just kind of fills and holds air for them. Because um, these guys can actually hold their breath for quite a long time. They've got pretty much everything that we've got in there, and it's just all elongated to fit inside of their body. But 
ball pythons are super awesome, super great pets. Um, if you guys, again, if you have any questions, if I missed anything, let me know. If you haven't already, please subscribe. We do a few videos every single week, and I'll see you guys in the next video.